I do subscribe to this view that the Philippines economy is slightly overheating. As your last guest just also said that the economy has been growing at above 6% growth levels for some time. And I would say that it's been growing above potential for all of that period. Now, when that happens over sustained periods of time and you have low inflation globally, some of those effects get hidden. But for the Philippines' case, I do argue that the economy is overheating and the central bank should probably respond to that. Otherwise, we will end up with bubbles on the asset side of the, of the economy and that can cause problems down the road. If, uh, the, if, if the BSP should be raising rates, how soon do you think they should be doing it? I mean, how much longer do you think we can uh, stay at these particular levels before they're forced to raise rates? So I think the central bank will probably stay on hold until the end of this year, but early next year we do have some changes coming through. The tax uh, package, the train package that is likely to go into implementation phase, and at that time some increase in inflation is expected. Plus at the same time we might see a more hawkish Fed come December, and that adds on to pressure for the central bank as well, because we might say yes, the central bank needs to respond to the Philippines economy, but there's also a global picture to keep in mind. And on the back of that, we're expecting rate hikes at the beginning of next year. All right, perhaps sometime next quarter. Now, of course, this is all linked to inflation, as you mentioned. It's still being seen as benign. But, Vinader, we're seeing pressures from creeping oil prices, a possible uptick in, from that first tax reform package you mentioned. My question is, do you think the Banco Central has the tools to stay on top of it if inflation goes haywire? So... The central bank does have some tools, there's availability of interest rate, but the liquidity situation in the Philippines is very high. There's lots of excess liquidity that will need to be removed over time. The central bank has taken some steps towards that at the beginning of this year. However, I think that given that some of the benign inflationary impact is coming from food, excess food production, uh, there's been some uh, overall benign prices for oil, but there are other factors that are driving Philippines' inflation higher. If you look at non-tradable inflation in the Philippines, that is picking up because wage growth has been strong. So there is an argument to be made that probably the central bank should have responded by now, but certainly it should be responding uh, by next year. Excess liquidity, I'm glad you brought that up, Vanindra, because uh, uh, BSP Governor Nestor Spinelia also mentioned recently that there is a plan to lower bank reserve ratios here gradually from 20% to perhaps below 10%. Now, this could unleash more liquidity in the markets, uh, potentially. Is this a good time to be thinking about lowering reserve ratios if liquidity, excess liquidity and inflation are concerns for the Philippine economy? So if we look at every time that there have been changes to the deposit facility since 2012 really, we have seen liquidity come back into the economy and that liquidity then trying to find houses where it could go and live. So you could be equity markets, could be the term deposit facilities, could be recycling back through the banks into the SDA facility. We've seen this behavior in the past. Now if you remove the reserve requirement, reduce it even further, we will see even more money coming into the economy that will need to go and find a home whether it's in the real estate market or any other part of the economy, that's going to cause problems. Now, the issue isn't that, that the economy has a lot of potential to grow. It does have a lot of potential to grow, but there are still a lot of regulatory constraints, especially on the investment side, that need to be removed so that this money that comes in can be absorbed productively. Now, first, that step needs to be taken. Before that, releasing the liquidity could become problematic. And in fact, inflationary, both for asset prices and also for the broader economy. All right, Vinader, let's talk about the peso a little bit. The, in recent sessions, it's gotten a bit of a pick-me-up, but it's still clearly Asia's biggest loser year-to-date. Now, some economists say that the weak peso is a good thing for local markets. What do you think? So the weak peso does have its advantages uh, on the export sites to, to an extent, on the BPO sector to an extent, even in terms of remittances. If the peso amount increases, people tend to send more and earlier. Having said that, the current account is falling into a deficit. And if you think about it, what's driving it? It's higher imports. It's higher imports of a very specific kind, capital goods, automobiles, these kinds of things, which the Philippines isn't producing itself, again, because productive capacity doesn't exist. Now, Without putting that in place, we will see that with the domestic pressures, with more spending probably coming in for the government, we'll see probably the current account deficit widens even further. That could put more pressure on, on the currency. So overall, a current account deficit may be necessary for the economy and might be a good thing as well. But the other side of the equation, wherein higher FDI inflows come in and sort of 
cover that up, that part is still missing and needs to be worked upon. So investment space again comes into question, regulations come into question. These things need to be addressed for this to become sustainable. Just quickly, Vinander, in two sentences, can you tell me what NatWest's um, uh, outlook for the peso is by the year end? How much further do you think this might, the peso might fall by December? So we are looking for some further depreciation. Part of it because we think the dollar will strengthen. Our house view is that the central bank, the Federal Reserve, will go ahead and hike interest rates in December, and that there will be further hikes going into next year as well, more than what the market is pricing in at the moment. We think the market will converge to that, which means a stronger dollar. At the same time, I think the peso probably depreciates as well slightly uh, on the back of the current account deficit and expectations over the next couple of years. So overall, we are looking for the peso to depreciate by 2 to 3 percent over the next uh, few months, depending upon uh, how, how much of a strength we are expecting for the dollar. All right. Interesting insights. We'll have to leave it there again. Uh, Vaninder Singh uh, from NatWest Markets, thanks again for joining us from Singapore on our broadcast this afternoon on In The Loop.